Attempting to build my first car in about 35 years. So thanks to my good friend Bud, I have this Ravel 32 Ford three window coupe and a bunch of other cars. These were actually his son Jesse's cars. So these builds will all be in honor of Jesse. And as I was saying, this is about 35 years since I built a car. So we're gonna get on this one. Let's get right over to the video and show you what I've been doing. What's in the bottle you ask? A 32 Ford. Well, if you guys remember, I stripped the chrome parts off in that one video with the super clean. And unfortunately I didn't leave it in there long enough after I stripped the chrome and there is a nasty film that's left on the pieces so what i did was i put them into this windex solution and i'm just waiting for that to come off we'll strip all that off and we'll get back on the build so here we go everything's pulled out of the windex i just got to dry it off get the rest of that sludge off those pieces and then i could prime them up you car guys are going to kill me during these videos because i'm really not a car guy so a lot of this stuff is going to be hootsie watsies and thingamabobbers so if i do say something wrong i have no problem with you throwing in the comments below what the part actually is i threw the first coat of primer on the chassis uh, just to see things that I have to take away like the injector pin mark here. I don't know if you guys are as anal as me about it. Even though this wouldn't have been seen, it said made in China down over here. So I sanded all that off. Let me know in the comments below if you take the wording off of that. I also threw some primer on the body just to see what defects we have. We have the mold line across here on the top. I really don't think those belong there, especially this one. I know this definitely doesn't belong there. I was looking up photos and then the mold line comes across and you can see it step up onto the chrome that would be here or the finish of the door and also it comes down here now the problem is when they molded this this piece across the back steps up pretty high so if i sand this down it's not going to mate upright so once i get rid of this mold line here i'm just going to leave the step in it i'm going to have no choice but to leave the step in it and we also have the mold lines here and here which we got to get rid of and that's pretty much it on the body otherwise everything else looks pretty good uh i built the engine a while back when i first started this and primed it up so i got everything pretty much together on here it's now up to painting the only thing that i was upset about is the distributor cap over here for some reason it leans backwards no matter what i do even gluing it forward it just started to lean back i don't plan on doing the wiring from the distributor cap over to the engine block itself and i just want to get one under my belt and i kind of want to drive you guys crazy with the wrong colors that i'm going to paint it right now i'm going to take you through the quick four-step process we're going to go from this to many pieces on many sticks and then we'll go to to many sticks with primed up pieces but now I get to take a look at all these pieces, see what's wrong with them, get all the mold lines out, injector pin marks and stuff like that. So that's going to be the next step, taking all this stuff down. And uh, once I get through some of those parts, I'll show you where we uh, corrected a lot of stuff. Okay, so I was talking about this lip a little earlier and I went looking at tons and tons of reference pictures. No Ford of this year has this here. So this is a mold line. I actually posted a short on YouTube and Chris Cortell seen it and Chris K from Leona Timber Company also saw it and they told me no that's definitely a mold line so what we're gonna have to do this is a big lip i'm gonna sand this down and get this as flush as possible i may actually only feather this down so it looks like it's gone but this still might be the raised lip in the middle i'm gonna do my best to get rid of that so let's get on that before we get on those other pieces that i just primed up all right let's get to the getting on this lip get rid of it and make it look like it's supposed to be i don't know what i want to do if i'm gonna hit it i guess i'm gonna hit it with a metal file first and then we'll see how that works and we'll go from there. Moved over to the squadron sanding sticks. So I didn't like how the file was doing on it. So we'll see if we could get this guy down. Still a little bit of a lip there. Before I lose my trunk line over here, my panel line, because of how much I'm sanding. I'm just gonna scribe it out as I go, as long as I don't go outside that line. I think I'm still inside the line. It's gonna stink if I'm outside the line. Then I'll just have to take a straight edge and get that panel line back in there. Definitely think I went outside the line, so I'll have to, I'll have to get that out too. That is one monster lip. I know I have some of these somewhere else, but I don't know where they are. And I got to deal with these old ones for now. I may actually break out some regular sandpaper and start knocking this guy down. Definitely going to have to rescribe this line back in up here. So I'll have to take a straight edge of some sort, get that back in there and get it back uh, looking like a trunk again. These are still high, but here's a tip while I'm sanding. 
Don't go out buying those small sheets of Tamiya or other brand sandpaper, the paper itself, for like 20 bucks for, for a tiny sheet. Go out to AutoZone or something like that, pick up a whole bunch of these. I think I paid five bucks each for these and they have a whole bunch of sheets and then I just cut them down to little squares. Trying not to flatten out the side either. So hopefully I don't do that, but we're definitely getting getting to a lower point where it's looking much, much better. If I would use a lower grit sandpaper, this would go a lot quicker, but I don't have any. And you keep seeing me use the skewer, that's because it's kind of in a tight position. I really can't feel with my finger or my fingernails are a little too short. So I just keep taking the skewer to see, like I feel a little bump there. So I got to go a little more there. This one is almost gone. I got a little bump on the corner and then up on the corner. I don't know if you can see it, but up on the corner rounds over here, this lift, I'm going to have to be really careful and go really slow and get rid of this mold line here and this mold line here. And then we'll go back in and get this trunk lid back to where it belongs. We're going to lose that detail, but we're going to put it back in. Yeah, there was a little more sanding. Okay, that's good there. Now I just gotta get over here where we have the little lump over here. We gotta, we're gonna have to try to blend this in. I'm not gonna be able to take it straight down like that one. So I'm gonna have to kind of slope it, I guess, and make it look like it's all one piece instead of having this big gap right here. Well, not gap, but this lip right here. So we got this side is good. In the middle here, I gotta take a little more down. So I still got a lip there and just a little lip in the corner here. And then the deck is gonna be fine back there. Okay, it's feeling like there's still a little bit in the middle that's not completely flat, but the edges are definitely, definitely flat over here, except for that right there. That's the other top of the lip here. So we're gonna have to work on that next. I still wanna work on this just a little bit more, but I think I might have to try to scribe this back in before I totally lose it. I still have this corner here, so it should stay. Get the dust out of the corners here. That's where this also comes in handy too getting the dust out of the corners. So we know we got that point there. I gotta go from this corner and go straight across. Now I'm not gonna use the dentist tool on this. This is a uh, sculpting tool. It's not really for panel lines. I gotta actually get the proper tool for that, but it's sharp enough and it works. And uh, I'm just gonna try to get this middle portion back. This way I know where it is. Right there it stopped. So I know I'm gonna have to put something in here. I lost a lot of it. And I don't wanna go too deep either. I doubt you're gonna be able to see it just cause of the white, but in here, this small section, I'm starting to get that deeper. Uh, I'm gonna put a straight edge on it. I'm probably gonna use my file right here to try to make a straight line and then pull across with this tool and get that from corner to corner. Sounds a lot easier than, uh, than me actually doing it. I could probably put masking tape, but then I won't have anything hard on the edge to go by. And that's what I want for the corner here. I wanna go, go here. So I'm gonna have to keep flipping the car around. I really think I gouged that in the wrong spot. Yep, digging down a little bit, I actually found the old line. So I'm just gently going across to get this side back. And then I'll pull it in one straight pass to make a deeper line. If I go past it over here, I'm not too worried because it's popping out and up. So I'll just take a little sandpaper and get rid of any mark on this side. But yeah, this is this is definitely being a task. If you do get this 32 Ford, you're gonna wanna take that off. Or if it doesn't bother you, the two little lips here, then just leave it. Otherwise it's a lot of extra work to get that flat on the back. Oh, nice, nice, nice boys and girls. I got, I got very lucky. It was soft over here. Now I just gotta pull straight across that again again and get it a little deeper to match this side and this corner here a little deeper to match this side. Now um, this side is actually wider on the trunk than this side and actually I saw other kits of this and other pictures and all of them have like this little indentation over here. I'm not going to bother fixing that. I want it to look nice. It doesn't have to be the greatest. I want to get a car under my belt, get that done and then we'll start working on more cars and other builds. Now, I'm definitely getting there slowly but surely. Don't call me Shirley but I don't know if, if you can see that or not. It's definitely, definitely a lot of work, a lot of tedious and careful work. I'm going very slow, just rubbing this guy back forth. Like I said, it's not the proper tool. I don't know if you can see that, but I can pull the plastic out if I want to, a curl of the plastic. So I just don't want to gouge too deep. And 
Throw in the comments below if you know the right scribing tool or a very good scribing tool that I can get instead of using the carving tool or I should say the uh, sculpting tool. I really wish you guys could see that but it's pretty close. Uh, this isn't perfect over here but you're not going to notice really once there's paint on there depending on uh, what color I paint this. If I paint it black there's not going to be panel line in here anyhow so it'll just be black all depending on what color that I paint it. And now to smooth out and clean up those edges a little bit I'm just going to run a little Little bit of extra thin cement from Tamiya in there that'll get rid of all those burrs and everything and knock that down it'll just melt it down and that's that on there so now I got to work on the rest of the seam work up here or the mold lines up there and then this should be done now this is the spot that I'm really gonna have to be careful on over here and with the lighting and the white you might be able to see it right there and that's where the stick is hitting it right there those so that's the lip that we're just gonna try to blend into the other lip instead of taking the whole thing down I think I would ruin the curve on it if I try to go flat like I did with the trunk piece over here. So we'll try to just blend that in, make it look good, and we'll call that a day on that. The sandpaper is a little big, so what we're going to do is I'm going to get my needle point file, and we'll see if we can take a needle point file, get that down, and then just refine it with the sandpaper after that's down. So we'll go with the rounded edge metal file, and we'll see how that works. I do like my metal files, and this is going to take a little time because this I really want to go slow and and carefully with. I gotta kind of work on more of an angle than just straight up and down or side to side I should say. The metal is taking it down a lot so you might not be able to see this. I, I know it's hard to see me sanding so I'll try to get in here a little bit better once it's all done. I'm just hoping I don't take off too much of the roundness because that would be bad and if I do hopefully it's not too noticeable that I took down that mold line but that was a very bad spot for that mold line to be. In. So we're just gently going going back and forth trying to get it get it done even a flexi file wouldn't get in here So this is just a lot of hand work and it's very tedious work and it's very nerve-wracking Especially if you don't want to lose any of your rounded corners here on the trunk You really really got to be careful and just go slow and do your thing So let's see if we got rid of that. There's just a little hair of a lip there little hair of a lip still trying not to press too hard and we're just trying to get rid of that as as gently and softly as possible even if it takes me a million years to do it right now I'm using the 400 grit I'm not using a, a low grit and we're still working on that guy we're still working on it that's pretty darn close I'll just fiddle with it a little bit more and then I'll, I'll call it good because you're really not going to notice once the paint is on there that lip is there so and this is not going into any kind of competition or anything like that so I'm not too too worried about it I'm just more worried about losing that round on the moldings that I don't want to lose I just want to lose the lip or most of the lip and that's actually that's actually fairly good on the top the bottom the middle is definitely gone so now I get to do the other side well thanks for stopping by for the first part of the 32 Ford from Ravel we got a lot of stuff done especially the back lip over here the engine was pre-done already I think the next video we're gonna start painting this guy up we got parts primed I'm ready to go for sanding and getting rid of marks and all that other stuff and we also started working on the chassis so this will be a series I don't know how long it's going to be hopefully i can get it done before the end of the year maybe five six seven parts but you will see this guy finished before the end if you have any questions or comments throw them in the comments section below and i guess that's about it for this video so guys have a great night make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you on the next video take care and bye bye